Imagine people from around the world coming together to build something that could change our future. Yeah. Wow. Bravo. This is the story of creating the largest and most powerful nuclear fusion reactor ever. An effort to recreate the sun's energy here on Earth. With thousands of experts from 35 nations, this project aims to unlock clean and limitless energy through nuclear fusion. If successful, it could revolutionize how we power our planet. And as we dive deeper into this incredible story, you'll see just how remarkable this journey truly is. To understand why this experiment is so important, we need to step back and see the bigger picture. If humanity can achieve nuclear fusion at scale, it could change the world in Omindu in unimaginable ways. Fusion, also known as thermonuclear burning, is the process that powers the stars, including our sun. The specific nuclear reaction that powers the sun is fusion, fusion of hydrogen into helium. It has the potential to produce virtually limitless energy, making it one of the most promising solutions to our energy challenges. The numbers are astonishing. Nuclear fusion can generate up to 4 million times more energy than fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. Unlike these traditional energy sources, it doesn't release harmful greenhouse gases like CO2, making it a clean alternative that could significantly reduce our impact on the planet. And if the word nuclear makes you feel uneasy, let me ease those concerns. A nuclear fusion reactor doesn't produce long-lived radioactive waste like traditional nuclear power plants. It also doesn't rely on materials like plutonium or uranium, which can be used to create weapons. Instead, it uses isotopes of hydrogen, tritium, and deuterium, which are very safe. And at the same time, these are also among the most abundant elements in the universe. As we connect the dots, it's clear why scientists worldwide are so determined to make this breakthrough. So, how does all of this work? And why is it taking so much longer to master fusion reactors compared to the nuclear fission reactors we've been using for over half a century? The answer lies in the fundamental difference between the two. While fission reactors split atoms to release energy, fusion reactors do the opposite. They force atoms together. This process, though incredibly powerful, is much harder to control. Fusion mimics what happens inside the sun, where hydrogen nuclei collide at extreme speeds and temperatures to form helium atoms, releasing immense energy. This machine, incredibly, replicates that same process, but contains it within a structure. As you might imagine, controlling something so intense is no easy task. That's why all the construction you see at ITER, the massive site filled with buildings and systems, centers around one critical device called the tokamak. The tokamak is the heart of the entire operation. In simple terms, it's a massive chamber that uses powerful magnets and extreme heat to create plasma inside a vacuum. Plasma is essential for nuclear fusion, and the tokamak is designed to generate and control it. Soon, you will see the inside of this impressive device to learn more about how it works and to stand in the very place that might one day unlock a new source of energy, one that is clean, abundant, and affordable. This potential is why scientists call nuclear fusion the holy grail of energy. They've dreamed of controlling this power, harnessing it to free humanity from limited oil supplies and the pollution caused by coal. Yet, this dream is complicated. So complicated that even starting construction on this ambitious project took decades. But the progress being made now brings hope for a future powered by clean and limitless energy. This is the vast assembly hall at ITER, where all the components are brought before they're carefully checked and then moved into the tokamak. It's difficult to fully understand just how complex this project is. Nothing else even comes close to it. The tokamak itself has over a million components and 10 million individual parts, and every one of them must be perfect. 
There's no room for error. That's why all the components are brought into this huge room first. Then these giant cranes with their yellow beams overhead pick up each part and carry them to the tokamak pit for assembly. It's an amazing sight to see. For instance, the vacuum components, the most critical parts, have to be 100% leak tight. You already know there's no room for mistakes, especially when dealing with a fusion reactor. Special welding procedures are used, and full-scale leak tests will be conducted all the way up to the launch. What's more, ITER is even developing technology to detect leaks with incredible precision, measuring down to the width of a hair divided by a million. It's clear that they're taking this project very seriously. The story of ITER began back in the 1980s when Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and U.S. President Ronald Reagan formed an international fusion initiative. With the Cold War coming to an end, both leaders hoped to create a new, inexhaustible source of energy for the benefit of all humanity. After the initiative's launch in 1986, several European countries joined the partnership, along with Japan, and ITER was born. Today, there are seven members of ITER, with Europe contributing through its 27 EU countries, along with Switzerland and the UK, though the latter has less direct involvement. Around 45% of the construction funding comes from these European nations, while Japan, China, India, Russia, Korea, and the US each cover about 9%. It wasn't until 2001 that the design of the reactor was finalized, along with an estimated construction cost of $5 billion. A few years later, the site for this groundbreaking project was selected in southern France. And in 2010, the building work finally began. Four years were spent constructing the ground support and seismic foundations for the tokamak. The building that houses it is truly massive standing 60 meters above the ground and dropping 13 meters below. Here it is, the massive ITER site spread across 180 hectares, an area almost as big as Monaco. This enormous piece of land, gifted by France to the ITER organization, is now home to one of the most ambitious scientific projects ever undertaken. It's hard to believe that back in 2010, this place was nearly empty. Today, it's a bustling hub of activity, with the Tokamak building and assembly hall taking up a significant portion of the site. But that's just one part of the story. The ITR site houses 39 different buildings and technical areas. These include cooling towers, a control room, waste management facilities, and even a cryogenics plant. The cryogenics plant is essential. It produces liquid helium to cool the 10,000 tons of superconducting magnets down to nearly absolute zero, or 269 degrees C. This extreme cooling is critical because, without it, the magnetic fields needed to maintain the plasma won't work. Beyond the cooling systems, the site also features high-voltage electrical areas and massive buildings for converting electricity. Alternating current, AC, from the grid is transformed into direct current, DC here, powering the magnets. One major contributor is the VFR Consortium, an international team responsible for constructing nine key structures, including the Tokamak Complex, Assembly Hall, and Control Building. For the Tokamak, they've installed over 100,000 embedded plates, created specialized concrete formulas, and executed complex geometries with precision. To ensure everything runs smoothly, they've even developed methods to find and monitor cracks in the structures. VFR itself is a collaboration between French companies, Vinci and Raisel Beck, along with Spain's Ferrovial. Together, they've spent over a decade working on the civil engineering for the Tokamak complex. With most workers coming from Spain and France, one of their first challenges was overcoming cultural differences. Yet through open communication and a collaborative spirit, they achieved incredible results. This is the basement of ITER, the foundations of the ITER project house critical components beneath the massive nuclear fusion reactor, which weighs the same as three and a half Eiffel Towers. 
The reactor sits on a massive slab supported by around 500 seismic bearings. These bearings are designed to absorb energy from earthquakes, isolating the tokamak and assembly hall from ground movements and ensuring operational safety. This area contrasts sharply with the assembly hall above. While the hall is complex and clean, the basement has a simpler construction site feel. However, its role is crucial. Without this robust foundation, the entire project would not be viable. The combination of rough civil works below and precise mechanical systems above highlights the unique challenges of the construction process. The ITER project involves unprecedented engineering complexity. Many elements of the construction are labeled first of a kind because they require new technology, unique materials, and innovative designs. Specific curves, novel materials, and immense dimensions are necessary, making it distinct from previous tokamak projects. Above ground, the tokamak complex features a massive ring fortress, a three-meter thick, six-story-high shield of steel and concrete. Its purpose is to protect workers and the environment from radiation during fusion reactions. As Europe hosts ITER, much of the construction comes from European nations. However, key components like the world's largest stainless steel vacuum chamber, weighing nearly 4,000 tons, were manufactured in India. This chamber, made in 54 segments, was shipped to France and transported over 100 kilometers using a specially built route called the ITER itinerary. Roads were widened, bridges reinforced, and paths adapted to carry these massive pieces to the site. Without this effort, many critical components could not have reached the facility. Other complex parts, like the toroidal field coils, considered the most challenging elements, were produced globally, with half coming from Japan. These are the largest superconducting magnets ever built, weighing 6,000 tons and making up a quarter of the tokamak's weight. The project's complexity extends to its workforce. Around 15,000 workers from 5,000 companies and 90 countries have collaborated on construction, making ITIR the most globally inclusive science project ever. Technology has been vital in managing a project as massive as ITIR. Digital tools like Procore have improved communication, collaboration, and efficiency particularly for tasks like Foveal's critical contract to design, supply, and install over 200 nuclear doors for the Tokamak complex. Using Procore has streamlined project management and problem solving, helping ITIR progress steadily toward its goal. Now over 75% of design, construction, and installation work is complete, bringing it closer to becoming operational. Now you are seeing the heart of ITIR, the tokamak, where nuclear fusion will take place. Inside the vacuum chamber, hydrogen fuel will form plasma. To reach fusion, hydrogen atoms will be heated to 150 million degrees Celsius, causing them to fuse and release immense energy. Powerful superconducting magnets cooled to near absolute zero will confine the plasma creating a space that will simultaneously be one of the hottest and coldest places in the universe. This ambitious engineering feat involves global teams working on every detail to ensure success. Once assembly is complete, ITER will aim to create burning plasma, where the fusion reaction sustains itself with minimal additional energy. This groundbreaking step will set ITER apart from smaller scale fusion experiments and bring us closer to harnessing the power of the stars. Most of the physical infrastructure at ITER is built and in place. From the main buildings to the support structures and drainage systems, everything is up. However, despite careful planning and inspection, there have been setbacks. In November 2022, ITER discovered cracks in cooling pipes and issues with parts of the vacuum vessel. This led to delays, and the assembly of the tokamak is paused until repairs are complete. These setbacks are not new. Since the design was first revealed in 2001, costs have risen, 
and advancements in fusion technology have caused delays. A design review in 2007 and another in 2016 pushed the price up to 22 billion euros, and the target date for FIRST Plasma was moved to 2025. Then came the pandemic, followed by the technical issues mentioned earlier further delaying progress. A new project plan with updated dates and costs is now under review. The goal is now to skip FIRST Plasma and start the machine at full power aiming for advanced experiments by 2036. However, the cost has risen by another 5 billion euros. Right now, teams are making progress, though not everything has gone smoothly. Some issues with the vacuum sectors and thermal shields had to be addressed. These shields separate the hot from the cold. While these problems were different, they both had to be fixed. Fortunately, Action teams were set up to solve these issues, and now the first module is ready to be placed back into the pit early next year. Despite these challenges, the teams here are breaking new ground. They're pushing the boundaries of science and engineering, attempting something that's never been done before. However, it's important to note that ITIR will never produce electricity for the grid because it's an experimental reactor. The goal is to prove that fusion can be done on the required scale and to help others learn from what's achieved here. While ITER is the center of attention, other organizations are also working on fusion reactors. For example, scientists at the Max Planck Institute in Germany, with their Wendelstein 7X Stellarator, achieved a significant milestone in 2015 by achieving first plasma and maintaining a stable reaction for eight minutes. In December 2022, scientists at the National Ignition Facility in California made history by achieving fusion ignition. They successfully produced more energy from the fusion reaction than was put in, using lasers to fire at a small capsule filled with hydrogen isotopes. This method produced 3.15 megajoules of fusion energy from just 2.05 megajoules of laser energy. While this breakthrough is significant, it doesn't mean the race is over. The laser method used at the National Ignition Facility takes a long time to fire, and the net energy gain is small compared to the power demands of today. Fusion is not a race, it's about progress. Many organizations, including private startups, are working toward the same goal to bring fusion energy to the grid. What makes ITIR different is that it unites 35 nations, pooling their resources and talents to take a bold step forward. This cooperation is a huge opportunity, bringing together knowledge, cultures, and people in ways never seen before. It's incredible to be part of something so complex and ambitious. Every day presents new challenges and problems to solve. The fun comes from making progress, no matter how small, and ensuring that each day we've moved a little closer to the goal. The complexity, coordination, and multicultural teamwork are unmatched in any other project. Considering everything we have found, two things that stand out about ITIR. First, it's unlike anything else. While most projects focus on transport, housing, or commerce, ITER stands apart in its ambition, scale, and attention to detail. The potential here is mind-blowing. It's hard to believe this very spot could one day mark the birth of a new energy source. Second, it's striking how similar ITER is to many other projects. Construction worldwide relies on amazing people coming together, planning, and achieving the impossible. Though ITER is on an extreme scale, it follows the same recipe. Incredible people working together to shape the future. What do you think about the idea of nuclear fusion changing the world? Do you believe it could be the key to a clean and limitless energy future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you in our next video. Until then, take care and thanks for watching.